Hello, my name is Hugo Aramberri, and I'm here today to present the talk anti electricity in pyroxene-like oxides. This talk is part of the mini colloquium on oxide heterostructures and interfaces held at the 2020 joint event between the condensed matter divisions of the European Physical Society and the Royal Spanish Physical Society. This work has been carried out under supervision of Jorge Iniguez at the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology and it has been funded by the Fond National de la Recherche of Luxembourg. Okay, so let's start uh, from the definition of an antiferlectric. An ideal textbook antiferlectric is a material that fulfills two conditions. So the first one is that the system has to show an antipolar pattern of electric dipoles so that the overall uh, di electric dipole is zero. And the second is that the system has to arrive to a field-induced uh, polar or ferroelectric phase when subject to an electric field. Now, antiferlectrics have been proposed to serve in many applications, such as in high-density energy storage or in cooling technologies, but the field faces uh, two main challenges, challenges, which are that antiferlectrics are still relatively scarce materials, and also most of the solid-state antiferlectrics we know today are based on lead. So in our group, what we try to do is to try to find new antiferlectric materials. Now, our first approach was to carry out a, a high throughput search using density functional theory. And what we did was to compute the structural instabilities using the cubic perovskite structure for many different compounds. The idea was that the materials that showed the strong antipolar instabilities would be good candidates to display antiferroelectricity because they would already fulfill the first criterion, which is to be an antipolar uh, material. Now, unfortunately, we did this for many non-magnetic compounds, but only a few, namely three uh, vanadates, showed strong antipolar instabilities. Uh, moreover, the systems that showed these antipolar instabilities uh, had in overall very strong instabilities, which already makes you think that uh, the perovskite structure is not a good reference structure for these systems, and therefore they would like to be very far away from the perovskite. Nevertheless, with the help of ab initio molecular dynamics simulations, we managed to find the ground state of potassium vanadate. And here I'm going to show you a video with the perovskite structure evolving into the ground state of potassium vanadate. So first, you will see that the system elongates strongly along the z direction, yielding to a first rupture of a vanadium-oxygen bond. And in a further step, the resulting vanadium-O5 pyramids rotate so much that the second vanadium-oxygen bond is broken. Now in the final ground state, you see that the, the system is formed by vanadium O4 tetrahedral chains th that uh, cover the, the full space. Now this structure closely resembles that of a very important mineral family of compounds, which is actually one of the most abundant structures on Earth, which is the, the pyroxene family. When looking at the literature, we saw that uh, the ground state for potassium vanadate had already been reported in the 1950s, and it was uh, found to be exactly the one that we predicted. Okay, so having a closer look at the, at the structure, we saw that the tetrahedra were not uh, perfectly symmetric, and indeed, what happens when you have a, a non-platonic uh, tetrahedra around the vanadium atom is that the center of uh, negative charge is not exactly on top of the center of positive charge, and therefore, what you expect there is to have a, a net electric dipole. If we now draw the dipoles along one of these tetrahedral chains, we see that the, the bonds between the the bonds between the vanadium and oxygen atoms that form the backbone of the chain are longer than the vanadium oxygen bonds with the oxygens that are floating around the chain. So if we have a look at the the orientation of the different electric dipoles, we see that along the chain the in-plane component uh, is antiparallel. Where, while the out-of-plane component is constant along the chain. Now, if we have a look at the full structure, not only one of the chains, we see that the apical oxygens that uh, come from each of the chains point in opposite directions for neighboring chains. And in fact, if we draw the dipoles on top of, of this structure, we see that if we look only at the out-of-plane component, the out-of-plane component forms a perfectly anti-parallel uh, alignment of dipoles. Now, this means that this system, when you look at the out-of-plane component of the, of the dipoles, is 
precisely fulfilling the first condition for a system to be antiferroelectric, which is that the system is antipolar. So we know that the system is already antipolar. In order to check that it's antiferroelectric, we need to find a ferroelectric counterpart. And once the local origin of the dipoles is understood, you can uh, quickly realize that you can build easily a polar polymorph for potassium vanadate by simply rotating one every two chains on, on this compound so that the apical oxygens will all point uh, outside of the screen. And this is what we did. This is what the, the polar polymorph that we uh, thought of looks like. And indeed, when we draw the, the dipoles, we see that the out-of-plane component is pointing out of the screen for all of them. So we took this structure to the, our first principles code, and we, we saw that indeed this structure is a metastable solution for potassium vanadate. It lies at 140 milli electron volts per formula unit above the ground state, and it shows a polarization that is almost 0.1 uh, coulombs per meter squared. Okay, so we, we have found this system that is an antipolar system for which we already know uh, a polar uh, polymorph. So what remains for, for us to confirm that this system is antiferroelectric is to see that the system indeed turns into the polar uh, polymorph when subject to an electric field. Now in the computer we can do so by computing uh, the switching path. And we did so with the aid of a tool called the Notch Elastic Band and here I'm going to show you the evolution of the system when going from the antipolar to the polar state uh, along uh, the, the switching path. So you will see on the, on the left, you will see the, the structure evolving, and on the right on top, you will see how the energy uh, evolves, and on the, um, below you will see how the, the in-plane and out-of-plane components of the polarization evolve along the switching path. Okay, so let me play this for you. You will see that uh, on a first step, uh, half of the tetrahedra of the switching chain rotate, whereas the rest remains fixed. And on a second step, now the remaining half of the tetrahedra rotate. So this uh, switching path uh, takes place via a two-step process. Right, so we have this system that is antipolar, that has a electric counterpart, and we know how the system would switch into that, into that uh, polar polymorph. So we can now conclude that the system is indeed an antiferroelectric. Now, can we say something else? The answer is yes. We can still say something about the hysteresis diagram of this compound. So we can use the information we obtained from the energy profile of the switching path in the step that I showed you before, and we can use it to build an electric enthalpy. So we can write the electric enthalpy, enthalpy as you can see here below, and we can start giving values to the electric field and see how the energy profile looks like under different fields. Now with that information, we can see for what fields the system would rather jump into a different minimum or a different state. Now since we have the polarization for every step along the switching path, we can use uh, those uh, informations combined to try to estimate how the hysteresis diagram would look like at the given temperature. So here I'm showing you the result at 300 Kelvin at room temperature. And you can see that the hysteresis diagram features the double loop that is characteristic of antiferroelectrics. Not only that, but we can really also see from this uh, hysteresis diagram that the switching field required to switch uh, potassium vanadate is very large, namely of the order of 40 megavolts per centimeter, which is, uh, to be honest, not achievable in real life experiments. So with this, I jump to my final slide now let me first say that the, the work here reported has just been accepted in communication materials and you can see the DOI of the article just below my head. And let me give you a brief summary and conclusions from our work, a bit of outlook and a brief discussion. So in this work, I have shown you that we found a new type of antiferroelectricity in these three vanadates, namely potassium vanadate, rubidium vanadate and cesium vanadate. Not only that, but we have uh, computed the switching path we have seen that the switching in these systems to the ferroelectric state occurs in a multi-step fashion. Now, this is ideal for applications such as memory stores, which need uh, multi-step uh, switching. And one of the main problems we found with uh, our systems is that the switching fields we obtained were very large to achieve experimentally. So we are working in different ways to lower the switching fields, and one of the most promising that we have up to now 
is by mixing potassium vanadate with potassium niobate, the latter being a known uh, ferroelectric uh, system. And in this way, you would lower the energy difference between the polar and antipolar states, and this in turn will result in a much lower uh, switching field. And our, our preliminary results already indicate that we might lower the switching field by, by at least one order of magnitude. Most importantly, we have found anti electricity in three materials that had been known since the 1950s, but no one had looked for anti electricity in these compounds before. So we can say that these systems were anti electrics in disguise. Now the main take-home message that I want to convey here is that the key structural feature that enables anti electricity in the three vanadates we studied is shared by other important mineral families such as the pyroxenes or the pyroxenoids. So this means that there might be many more anti electrics out there flying out under the radar just in front of our noses. So our findings can be much more general than for the, only these three compounds. With this, I thank you for your attention. I welcome any questions or feedback to the email address shown on the screen. And I welcome you to also have a look at the more details in the uh, article with the DOI here shown. Thank you again and see you soon.